Bills fans, what's up? I really hope that I've resolved this sound issue first and foremost. Seriously, I've been trying, tinkering in the settings as much as possible. I'm no tech guy. I'll be the first to admit it. Um, so I really hope that the sound comes through well. I, I listen to every video before I post it, and the sound on my end sounds good. I am listening on a desktop, so maybe you guys are listening on a mobile device or whatever. So trust me, I'm not trying to be hard about this, but okay. Reacting to the breaking news. Not so breaking. If you follow me on Twitter, uh, the Bills have traded Tyrod Taylor for the top third round pick formerly owned by the Cleveland Browns. Um, in a move that is always big when it involves a quarterback, a move that signifies a, sh a paradigm shift uh, at, the, at the starting position and also the philosophy of the organization. Um, finally, finally, something, I mean, the screaming, I mean, I've been screaming out for, for almost, you know, so solidly, like, once I give up on Trent, probably late, late, oh, late 08, I was just screaming out for this organization to finally be proactive at the quarterback, proactive, not reactive at the quarterback position. And what they've been doing since then is essentially hanging out. You know, last or last regime, go back to then, last regime brings in Fitz. The organization hangs out there, bring him in 09, they hang out there to 2012. New, the new regime comes in, you know, in a bad quarterback draft. Insistent on drafting a quarterback. We'll barely see, not even a year of EJ. Didn't take a year to know he was no good, and then two year, uh, four games into his set is done. Orton was high by see ya. Bills hang out with Ty, and, and after that, the Bills have been hanging out. With Tyrod Taylor since 2015, just hanging out. Uh, wasn't slated to be the guy, as we know. Won the job against some pretty weak competition, and has and to his credit, he's kept it. But again, they haven't brought in any legitimate competition for him, and he will always be known as the quarterback who was the quarterback who helped break the drought and. You know, it was always the, the, the quintessential team guy. He said all the right things, did all the right things, worked hard, and just ultimately was up against it from a skill set standpoint. And it was just, as, as, as the years or the games went on, it was painfully obvious that the Bills, more times than not, were up against it when it came to the quarterback duel. He rarely went into a Bills game feeling that, look, we can't get into a shootout with these guys because we're going to not win a game. And we'd see it would be weird because there had been periods of games where Tyrod would start off gangbusters like that. That Raider game in 16 stands out like a sore thumb where he was just on fire in the first quarter and just went dormant for the rest of the game. A game in KC... In 15, in KC, was just uh, first half on fire, hitting Samuel in deep balls, dormant, just went away. Um, and that's that was pretty much his career in a nutshell, where he would flash for a quarter or a half and then just totally go away, or the whole game would be not very good. He had very few games where he was just completely on it. Um, the Denver game, to me, this year was one of the best games he had ever played as a Bill. Um, the one game he had played in Seattle was okay. There was some key mistakes he made in that game. Um, but I feel that the Denver game, I just felt like he was his most switched on. 
I mean, you could even argue that the second game he played as a Bill um, was the third game he played as a Bill in Miami. He was just completely lights out in that game, but he always seemed to own Miami, even right up into the end. And you see teams like this where they go into the playoffs and they get ousted, and their quarterback essentially they feel like their quarterback cost them. And in this case, it did because they the Bills, we as we all know, needed their quarterback to make one play in a game, one throw, and he wasn't up to the task, and you couldn't, we all felt like that that game was there for the taking, and it couldn't have, it couldn't be had by the Bills, and I know I'm doing a bit, a little, a little bit of a retrospective on Tyrod and his career as a Bill, but I think it's owed, you think he's, um, you know, he's, he's, like I said, he's been the good soldier, now it's time to move on, and as I've been saying on Twitter, I've been saying on here for a long time. I said it last year when the Bills started acquiring all these picks via trade in August, even during the draft, that these came in and knew the task at hand, that they weren't going to sit around on peace, on stand on ceremony, and just say, hey, here we're here, you know, kumbaya around the campfire, let's just roll with this because it's all great. No, it's not all great. It wasn't all great, and we've seen the drastic turnover at every layer of the organization, and we continue to see it in the locker room. And that's what, you know, when initially it came in, you know, you see McDermott, uh, you know, it was like kind of just a guy. But they needed, I felt from the jump street, that they needed to show me off the field if they were serious that those type of changes that we've been seeing would happen. Not all at once, obviously, because we, we, you just can't all just hat broad stroke it, but still, we've seen it piece by piece. Training staff, little bits of the coaching staff, um, the analytics department, personnel department, just the way they do business on a day-to-day -day basis, the way they interact with the media, some of the national perception. It's just boom, ba -da boom, ba -da boom, ba -da boom. Just you know, it, the only time that there's been kickback was the tie rod benching, and it just seems like, for the most part, the Bills made the playoffs. But even before that, and they hadn't made the playoffs yet. It, a small analogy. It's like the Bills. You know, the Eric Wood situation, he's retiring, and you see these mock drafts. They have centers going to the Bills. It's like, don't they know that the Bills starting center and Ryan Groy is on their roster? And that's what I mean. It's like, they these even these NFL people don't follow the Bills closely enough to know this, that this is a guy who came in admirably for Wood, his primary backup. He's a guy the Bills matched an offer sheet for the Rams to retain, so it's just, like, they don't see these things, it's like, they don't even bother, it's just like, oh, they need a center, here's a James Daniels from Iowa, or Billy Price, or whoever, no, and with the benching, I got it, and it was a building thing, he was never their guy, they'd watched him just throw for 50 yards, and felt like they need anything could have given them a spark. Now, could it have gone any more disastrous? It, it couldn't have. And McDermott, to his credit, pulled his bootstraps up, reinserted Tyrod as a starter, and said, look, my bad. I miscalculated the situation. I was upset with the result, but not the decision. <laughs> Remember, he said that. It's the, the, the result, not the decision. So he had no problem benching at Tyrod. That's neither here nor there, though. I wish him well in Cleveland. Um, they're getting a good guy, a good teammate, a hard worker, a guy that's going to you know, go in there with his lunch pail every day, you know, represent that organization well, very well. Um, he's going to win some games for that team. There's no doubt about it. Tyrod Taylor is going to win some games for Cleveland, games they likely would have, most likely would have lost by a turnover. Or just, you know, he'll make some plays with his legs. He'll he will get some he will make some good throws sometimes it will he will wow you sometimes with some of his throws but 
for me, it'll be that you'll start to see the consistency just isn't there with him, especially in the intermediate stuff, just the, when you need that simple first down, or sometimes he's just slow in his process and just doesn't get it. And overall, probably be the best quarterback Cleveland's had for quite a while. And, you know, wish him well there. I wish him well. And now, for the Bills, we move on. And it all spells and move up that draft board with the capital that's been accrued this year, what they still have next year, some pieces on the roster that they could potentially move. Maybe, maybe a Jerry Hughes is moved. Most likely a Corey Glenn is moved. So, there's still things, and we're, what are we, five days out from the official start of free agency. Now, I don't predict the Bills to be a big player in free agency. We've seen them, Chris Ivory edition. You know, in conjunction, you know, they have Shady. They, they still want to make this young quarterback, whoever he is, along with, a, I'm sure a veteran will be brought in. I have a feeling it'll be Josh McCown, somebody who knows the role, somebody who's been in the role, somebody who's mentored, somebody who's comfortable in his own skin, somebody who's been in the league, seen it all, done it all, had been knocked down multitudes of times, and will. Basically, just show this guy how to be a professional. And that's that's awesome. And I want that type of guy. I don't need a, you know, a younger guy situation where it's like he still feels like he's the man. He needs to know that this young quarterback is, is going to be the man and be okay with that. I don't need that whole... You have two quarterbacks, you have none situation. Now, I still want them to keep Peterman because I, quarterbacks are of the highest, utmost value. And who knows, Peterman could come in, have a good camp, have a good preseason, and, you know, just just there to be had. Just keep him around. But this, this clearly signals a move up the draft board. And I've been saying it's number two with the Giants. I like Mayfield. I love Mayfield, but I really have this strong inkling that it's for Rosen. Strong feeling it's for Rosen. And if that's the guy they believe in, that's the guy they believe in. you got to roll with it. But 50 days out, 49 days out from the NFL draft officially, and it couldn't come soon enough. It's an exciting time to be a Bills fan. Um, made a, another low-key signing just the other day, and... Defensive end, his name, it's it's going to be a hard one. I'm just going to call him Double O. I mean, I really have, I'm going to really have to work to pronounce this name. So let's just try to give it a go. Owa, Odizi Ichiwawa. I fuck, I butchered this poor guy's name. I apologize to you, man. Um, UCLA third round pick uh, was a guy who had to get his passion back for football. It's just a one-year deal, but an area of need, a guy who does not count against that compensatory pick formula that I think that they're going to be very, very eye, have their eye towards to try to get, because I, I firmly believe they plan on losing every free agent they have. I don't think they're going to retain one free agent. I think they're comfortable losing them all, not signing very many, and having enough comp picks in that third, fourth, fifth, sixth round next year to help bridge that gap in conjunction with the enormous amount of cap space they'll have in 19. They can really pick and choose where they want to sign guys, have money in the coffers for people that they want to re-sign. The roster will be turned over even more um, in terms of filtering guys out. So, yeah, this is a big... Big day, Bills fans, big day. I mean, a big day in early March, it feels good. Um, tell people all the time, the NFL just never, it never ends. It, the season ends, but it really never ends. And it's, it's um, it, it puts a smile on your face at this organization, that there's a regime in place that finally gets it, finally understands this team is a team 
like any football team, it needs to be driven and off by its quarterback and the resources that are allocated to the position are never never not enough never not enough I mean me and a, a fellow Bills friend Eric we talk about it if you feel like this guy is the guy there no price is too much no price is too much none I mean you've seen the Rams they struck out in 2010 with, with Bradford came right back at it six years later said fuck we're going right back at it um, other teams too you know with the Gabbert and Bortles did it work out probably not but Bortles no give him credit he got in the AFC championship game can't take that away from him not at all but but teams they've allocated better and more vast resources to, to the to the position and the Bills haven't in a long time a long time I mean Cleveland they got to stop trading back and take a quarterback. They really do. Can't wait till twenty-two. That's a that's a bad position for them to be taking quarterbacks. But they got to they got to take one. They haven't taken one that high since since Couch. They've kind of just you know passed the buck, and they've been in position. So it's it's their time now. You look. You know the Rams were aggressive, went up and got golf. The the Chiefs were aggressive and went up and got. Got wins. You gotta be aggressive and go up and get your man. It's just, it's the way you gotta do it, and you can't just sit, stand there and wait for things to come to you. You gotta go get those things, because it's so you're never going to be in a position, and you can never pick and choose. And people say, well, oh, he's he's not a sure. There is no such thing as a surefire quarterback. Number one, number two. Those so-called surefire guys, like that class of 83, when was the next surefire quarterback after that? Maybe Aikman, but then after him, who? You had to wait 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, another six, seven years, Bledsoe, sort of, and then Manning. But I'm talking about, like, boom, surefire was Manning, and then... Supposedly that 99th class was really, really great. McNabb turned out to be the best one with the most longevity. 99 was supposed to be Couch. 2000 was only like Pennington, but it had Brady. Nobody knew. 01 was, was Vic. 02 was... Nah... Oh three, uh, Carson Palmer. So I mean, then you went to oh four, and then you had that thick class there, and it was mainly Ben and and uh, Manning doing most of the winning. Rivers got gets a lot of stats. I mean, it's taken you know in oh five, it's taken Alex Smith this long. I mean, to seemingly seemingly come to the promise that he was supposed to have, but. It's crazy. And then Rodgers, you know, Rodgers is, you know, granted was under far for his three years and he's, you know, turned out as great as he's been. 06, 07, 08. In 08, you had, uh, you know, Ryan and, and, and Flacco. In 09, Stafford, but then Sanchez did nothing. 10, Bradford. And then was Tebow. Mm, nothing really else to, to write home about in that one. 11 was was okay. You had, you know, in, the, in that lo lower part, you had Dalton. Kaepernick had his run. Um, Newton. Newton's been, has been great. Got to a Super Bowl, didn't win it. Kaepernick got to a Super Bowl, didn't win it. We'll always love Andy Dalton as, as Bills fans. We'll always love him. He can do no wrong. And in 12 was an appreciably better class with, I mean, luck. Luck was the sure thing. See, that's what I mean. I'm just going through my head. Luck was the most surefire thing I remember than 
the last time was Peyton Manning. The last time I remember a surefire thing, like people were saying this guy's a surefire thing, or even reading about a guy being a surefire thing, was Elway. So you see the amount of time that is gapped between guys who say this guy has quite all the you're gonna have 10 years of draft classes where everybody has question marks then you're gonna have this one draft class where there's this guy there's this golden child it's like okay he is he's good but you just gotta hope in that one year after all after a decade plus that you're bad enough and you're down enough that you can just be in a position or you could just happen to be bad that year that you can go up and get that guy. It happens by accident. It doesn't happen by design. And, and you can't pick and choose when that time is. The only time you can pick and choose is when you want to allocate enough resources to go up and get the, the position. And that's what the Bills have done. And that's what they're doing. And that's what they're going to continue to do for the next you know, 49 days till the draft. And I can't wait. We can't wait. Our time has come. And this is what we need. This is what we needed for a long time. And it's whole finally going to come to fruition. I can't be more excited to be a Bills fan today. I know you guys are too. Um, I know there's some Bills fans out there that, that still have an affinity for Tyrod. And I totally respect that um, and understand it. But, you know, here it is. And let's enjoy it. Let's enjoy it, Bills fans. All right, you guys have a great weekend. Um, it's still early. It's only 10, 19 Eastern time. You guys, always great. I hope this sound issue is rectified. Please let it be. Again, I listen back. The sound sounds good on my end. Um, I do have, I'm going to click on this this program. I have this real tech um, volume equalizer I use sometimes, but I turned it off and re-listened to the sound, and it sounded still still good volume with mid-level so I, I really hope this works guys please um thanks bill Sands. i can't wait to hear what you guys think your reaction your thoughts and your opinions about this trade um and i hope you feel as i feel that no resource is too is too valuable not to give up for a quarterback because this is what needs this is what needs to happen you know, you watch teams, you watch that Super Bowl, you know, with the yards, the, the, the passing yards. You watch Foles, even, you know, Wentz, some of the throws he made to get him there. And he was just as much a part of that Super Bowl as anybody. And just Brady, you know, playing against Brady all these years, just is so up against it. You know, Tannehill has had his good games, too. Jets have had their run of quarterbacks, and you know here and there more so than the Bills that have have done it. You know, Favre had an okay year, didn't go to the the playoffs, but still he put up some good okay numbers that year. I mean, Sanchez, mm, Fitz had a good year with them. It was like a career year for him. Didn't make the playoffs, but I, Pennington had some good years. It was you know there was a little bit of of um, Testaverde in there, but still it's it's the Bills just have had. Bledsoe, who had the one year of just, you know, well, half one half a season of good. The same thing with Fitz, just one half a season of good, and that, that was it. So, seven years ago. All right, Bills fans, I'm going to shut up. You guys, you know, you're great. You're awesome. Um, amazing fans, amazing fan base. Uh, proud to be a part of, of, of a fan base like this and be a Bills fan. And, um... I want to definitely uh, see what you guys think about today's trade and uh, prospective moves and what you guys like to would like to see them do. All right, take care, Bills fans.